Hey, Mike Panaki here, and I had some time to sit out here in the lab and do some testing. So I thought, what a great opportunity to just record a video and go through this testing process I'm doing. So on one end of this connection, I have a Cisco Nexus 9000 C9372TX. So this is a Cisco 9000 switch. It's got 48 ports of 1 slash 10 gig copper, and it's got four QSFP ports. On the other end of the connection, I have a Microtech CRS326-24S-Q-RM. Now this has 24 SFP plus, and it's got two QSFP ports. So the idea is I could take and link these together using a 40 gig link. So I went out to Amazon, I bought a 40 gig fiber DAC cable. So this is a fiber cable that allows me to connect two devices at 40 gig using the QSFPs, but the fiber isn't, I can't disconnect the fiber. It is permanently attached, so it's a direct attached cable. This is a 15 meter cable that's connected the two of these together. So on the micro tick end, I have connected four NetAlly devices. Now here I have a combination of the Etherscope NXG and the LinkRunner 10 gig. The important thing is all of these devices are capable of transmitting and receiving at full line rate 10 gig. Now over on the Cisco end, I have what are known as peer devices. And these are NetAlly devices, same devices, that can reflect this traffic and send it back. So the idea is that for each one of these pairs, I can send 10 gig of full duplex traffic. So if we take a look at the screen, over here on the left-hand side, I have my micro tick interface and it shows what my current utilization is. Across the top right here, I have the four NetAlly devices I'm gonna use for sending traffic. And down here in my terminal window, I've got the uh, Cisco 9000 switch. And then over here, I've just got the model numbers of the equipment I'm using and what data rates I'm gonna send at. Now, before we start sending data, there's a couple numbers I want us to look at. And these numbers have gone up based on some of the testing I've done. But this is my transmit drop number. Now the transmit drop number shows me how many times I went to send a frame and there just wasn't any bandwidth available for me. So here's the deal. The trunk between these two switches has VLAN tagging on it, which uses up an extra four bytes of my header. So I can't really send traffic at the same line rate I would if there was no VLAN tagging. So when I was pumping data at 9.995 gigabits per second on each one of the transmitters, I was oversubscribing that link between the two switches. So what I did, I bumped that down just a little bit, and the goal was to send the most traffic I could without this number incrementing. That means I'm able to send traffic on that link without oversubscribing that link. And I did the same thing on the Cisco. So right here on the Cisco, we see our out discards. Now, if I go ahead and I run that command again, we see our out discards stayed exactly the same. So if my out discards are going up, it means that the link is oversubscribed. And if I saw any packet loss up here on my test equipment, well, that wouldn't really be a good measure of whether this link is able to send traffic without loss because I would be oversubscribing the link. So with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and start cranking up some traffic. So I'm gonna hit start on the first one. So we're sending traffic at just about 9.98 gigabits per second. And if we look over here, we see our transmit and receive rate, and we see those reporting. Now, one of the things I've found with the management interface on the Microtech is that as we really start pushing traffic, it'll appear and disappear and appear and disappear. I'm not gonna lose too much sleep over that. So we're moving traffic through, and we can see that we've got some traffic going through there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up my other 
traffic generator here. And we can see that we're almost up to 9, or almost up to 20 gigabits per second in each direction. Now our transmit drop has stayed the same. If I come in here and I look at this one, I see my out discards have stayed the same. And the number I'm looking for right here is my frames lost up and down. And right now, we haven't seen any frames lost up or down. So I'm gonna bring in another 10 gig of traffic. So I'm gonna hit start on the third tester. And if we come over here, we see that we're now up to right around 30 gigabits per second between these two switches. My transmit drop still looks good. I don't see any errors as far as transmit receive drops here. And if I take a look at my switch over here, all my counters look good and my out discards haven't increased. So I'm gonna throw on that last 10 gig of traffic. So now we are cranking pretty close to 40 gigabits per second of traffic through this link. And we're doing that bi-directionally. So I'm not seeing any packet loss yet. I'm not seeing my transmit drop increase on either the Cisco or on the MicroTik over here. And we're running awfully close to 40. Now, this is a live network that I'm doing this on. So what I need to be careful of is I need to take the broadcasts and things like that into account. But you can see that we haven't seen any packet loss across that link at our 40 gigabits per second. So we could let this run for the full time and we're gonna see pretty much the same results. Now, one thing you might notice is we do see some drops right over here. I believe that has more to do with the fact that we are really pushing that micro tick switch about as far as it's gonna go. And we didn't stop sending traffic during that time. We didn't lose any traffic during that time. We're just not reporting any traffic during that time. And our testers up here really tell us the story. We have not seen any packet loss. And if I slide down up here, we can see what data rates we're sending at. We can see what our latency looks like. And our latency has been very consistent. And if we look at our jitter, our jitter looks awfully consistent as well. So our latency is going to be the amount of time it takes the switch to make a switching decision. Our jitter is that variation in packet arrival time. So I would say that we're able to get the full 40 gig out of that link. I'm pretty happy with that. So if you stuck around this long, hey, thanks for taking the time to watch just some testing that I'm doing out here in the lab and how I can use tools like these NetAlly ether scopes and link runner 10 gigs to really load up a link and see if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing.